Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the co-reality of opening a game store, which is what I'm going to do January. The GP Houston is late January, so my store will be open before GP Houston. I wanted to just tell, lay out the facts to tell you why 90% of Magic the Gathering stores fail. And it's for an obvious reason. There's no, they don't go digital. So before there were sponsorships, before people were asking for money for apps and pets and puker trade and puker trade again, there was the concept that you should support your local game store that no longer exists on YouTube. Tolarian Community College has done so much for us as YouTubers, he is the tie that raised all boats. He's introduced a lot of people to magic, especially magic YouTube. And he's made it quite respectable or as respectable as you can get to be a magic YouTuber. That being said, if you watch his old videos, I was watching his older videos uh, when he was talking about a store, one of his stores got, there's something anime, got wrecked and he was making videos to support it. He would always say, you can't play Magic at Walmart. He no longer says that. And at some point in time, reality sinks in and you realize it's about money. It's no longer about supporting your local game store. Your local game store will never have the cheapest price because it's competing digitally. It's competing against everyone. So just like you cannot play at Walmart, you cannot play at, TC at TCG Player and unless you live in the area. And you cannot play at Card Kingdom, which I believe is located in Seattle. This is the core reason why Wizards of the Coast store itself went out of business. It didn't have, and it still doesn't have a good digital component to it. Have you ever tried to buy any of the Hasbro pre-cons or the convention items? It's really difficult and it times out. Sometimes it doesn't save in your cart. I don't know what they're using, but it doesn't really that make that much sense to me. However, they can't sell toys directly because then they would cannibalize or target Walmart. They would cannibalize everything that they're selling it to. So they can only really sell the promotional items. But even then, I think their shopping cart isn't that great. Uh, as someone who does e-commerce and I work with companies that do $10 million of e-commerce, $100 million of e-commerce, mainly via Amazon, but they do have their own Magenta's websites. They need help. If they had to stock all their products on their current website, it would not work. I'll point blank tell you it would not work. So why did Wizards of the Coast, why did 80 stores go bankrupt? So 80 different Wizards of the Coast stores at one time existed, including one in my local mall, the Exton Square Mall, in Exton, Pennsylvania. And I grew up with a Wizards of the Coast game store. Uh, there was no other reason to go to any other game store because, I mean, why would you go to some random game store when you can go to the people who produce the product and who always have the product in stock? So what it came down to was it's not a feasible model. I looked at the numbers. Let's say you bought Gatecrash RTR, you bought a lot of boxes, you bought Battle for Zendikar, you, you bought those boxes at $78. Let's say, yeah, let's say $78. Well, they're currently selling on Dave and Adams, and I'll show you this via screenshots, for under $70. Dragon Maze is under $70. I think Gatecrash is $72. RTR before it was sold out was $70. Conspiracy 2 is under $70. You're losing, and it's free shipping, and they give you free stuff. So not only do they ship it to you for free, they also give you a bunch of free stuff that you can choose from, which is good because I like free stuff. At uh, Dave and Adams. You can pretty much pick any set, any of these sets. You can buy fat packs for $25. Magic Origin fat pack, Shadows over in. Amazon is selling boxes for $75 now. Free shipping, Amazon Prime. How are you, as a local game store, buying it for $78 from your distributor going to compete with Amazon, 
something like David Adams, which I think they take a heavy loss in some products just so they can get customer loyalty. And I am a very loyal customer. And that's not the price, including the special discount. The special discount is when you email this random dude and he gives you like 5% off if you buy like, I don't know, like $500 of stuff. And then it scales up. So $70 for a Dragon Maze box, booster box, isn't even the cheapest price. Depending on what the box is, he can negotiate on individual pricing. So you buy a Dragon Maze box for 78 It sits there for 10 plus years or I don't know how long. It's not going to move. And then you're being undercut by everyone. Even if you wanted to get out, you couldn't sell it for 70 because David Adams is a very big chain with a lot of uh, loyal customers and you're just a, you might not even have a website. I was talking to the guy who was trying to sell me his inventory and I told him straight up, I only want cards over $5 buy list. I only want those in sealed product because I am scared to death of excessive inventory that does not move. And you have, you've accumulated 750 cards, 50,000 cards. That scares me a lot because the majority of those cards do not move. Maybe 5% of those cards are movable. The rest of it is no one, it would take more work to move it than it would be worth my time or anybody I could hire's time. So I typically don't pay even like interns, I paid them fourteen fifty. So I don't imagine if I had a magic store, I would pay them less. Fourteen fifty is around thirty thousand a year, and that's barely enough to live on, in my opinion. I would not pay anyone below fourteen fifty. Uh, I it's just not at fourteen fifty. More the majority of the inventory I was looking at would not move at that price point that I would pay for someone to do it, to do inventory registration, uh, automation, all that stuff. It's not going to work. The main reason that these local game stores, as I'm looking at their business plan, I have to come up with a business plan as myself. Maybe I'll show it to you when it's done to present to two different investors who are my friends. And yeah, so I'm going to put in some of my own assets. Uh, mainly my assets are not money. They are the collection myself, my, the, my own collection. And that's it. And they're going to put in cast assets to buy down some stuff. And we're going to go, but we're not going to do it in a normal way because those business models, you cannot buy a box of 78, have it sit there for 10 years and, and not be able to sell it for 70 unless you get free shipping and free stuff. So maybe you're selling it for $60. And the main reason is everything is economics. Everything is numbers and money. And that is the truth about YouTube as well. No matter how much you love your local game store, if someone's going to give you a sponsor, guess what you're going to do? The majority of you have never been to Card Kingdom. I heard Card Kingdom is a wonderful place to play Magic, and I've only heard positive stuff about it, but how is it that different from Walmart to you? Let's assume you live in Texas. You buy from Walmart, yeah, you're not supporting your local store. You buy from Card Kingdom, you're supporting someone else's local store. At the end of the day, you sh I've never been there and you will never go there. And that is why Wizard of the Coast's store model failed so much was it is very expensive to open a store as I'm adding up costs in my business model and eventually everyone will abandon ship. Wizard of the Coast abandoned 80 of its own stores because <laughs> survival rate didn't make sense. If their stores were very successful and they were just pumping money, which they should be doing because they're printing the cards, I guarantee you they would not just have 80 stores. They would might may have 800 stores. But they tested it and it wasn't a viable model, so they got rid of all their stores. And now they're putting the burden of these $70 booster boxes that they can never that these stores can. There are so many stores that don't even have a website. There's so many stores that don't even sell on TCG Player. Their survival rate is very poor. Because how are you going to sell? How are you going to sell when that player is on his phone looking at your case, looking at TCG Player, and he buys it in your store on TCG Player? 
How are you going to sell when they watch their favorite YouTuber and their favorite YouTuber is telling them to go card key them TCG player anywhere but your store? And here's a link so you can support. Survival rate is minimal to zero. I, I mean, my model is going to be very different. My model is going to be high margins. Don't become a WPN, which I'm going to explain a little later. Buy everything from David Adams. And I know Miniature Market. And there's another store, which I don't know if I should mention. But I, all the things are like half off in the store. It's like you can buy fat packs for under... Well, David Adams, you can get fat packs for under 20 depending on the sale. But this store has a bigger selection of fat packs, which I like because they are easier to move because they're not so expensive. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.